All right, so we're going into our health club this morning. We're talking about medical screenings. Now, researchers have proven that getting a medical screening yearly can actually make your life a lot longer. However, in this part of the world, especially here in Ghana, getting a screening is not a common thing. This is what people had to say when we asked them about medical screenings. I don't take part in health screening. Not even in my church. I, I don't have time for it. I just don't have time for it. I prefer doing other things rather than going for health screening. But I, I, I know it helps. I do take part when there's health screening in my community or in my area because my health is very important in a way that when they do the screening, maybe if there's any sickness in your body, maybe you may not know. You've been going to hospitals. Maybe they've not, they've never, maybe diagnosed you on that side. Maybe if there's a, that screen on your community, there's a, this an, it is an opportunity for you to know your health status. I learned we have to do it even six months. Every six months you have to do it as a human being. But not yet. <laughs> yes, not yet. Why? Because of time. Don't time. time. We don't have time. But we, we, we're supposed to have time for ourselves. But there's no time. But I'll urge everyone to have time. So I'll have time from today. Okay. <laughs> so I get screen. Okay. okay. Good, good, Thank good. You. You're welcome. Things I don't would like. Yeah, that's all because, you know, sometimes working in the hospital, is one will one think that uh, because you're working in the hospital, you are okay and then nothing's happening to you. But little will you know that maybe you have a problem within this within your system. The fact that you're working in the hospital doesn't mean that you are okay. There is a need for you to be able to go through a kind of a health scheme so that you know your status. Otherwise, anything that can kill you or maybe you, you fall short to any sickness, that would be also a surprise. And people outside were wondering why you working in the hospital like that and then you don't take advantage of health screens to know your status in terms of health. So it's very, very important that you take part. And so being taking part of this is something that is letting me know my standards in terms of anything. About you? All right, so there's various uh, opinions there on medical screening. Some say they don't have the time. Some say they're just not bothered. However, our very own Reverend Dr. Amasama Bano Fojo of the Bano Clinic explains the need for getting screened regularly. Health screening basically is to um, screen a community for conditions that are usually preventable. The purpose really is to be able to diagnose patients who have conditions which are not usually immediately apparent to them and which can, you know, continue for years in a subclinical state. And normally, by the time they find out that they do have those conditions, a lot of damage has already taken place in the body. And especially where it's a tumor or a cancer, probably that's going to cost the individual their lives. As an individual, at least a, every year you should have a screen. You realize that um, people in the European and American countries, their life expectancy is about 73 to 75. If you go into Asia, China, you're looking at about 83. But here in Africa, we're looking at 53 to 55 life expectancy. So you ask what are they doing that we don't do? And you realize that healthcare is more advanced in those countries. And they also um, ham on screening. The number one cause of death in the world basically is cardiovascular disease. That's your heart, blood vessels, okay? And you know that it's, uh, hypertension is prevalent in our society. And the thing about hypertension is that when you get hypertension, when your blood pressure goes up, it doesn't, it's not immediately apparent to you. So you can go years with your blood pressure being high and it doesn't give you any sign. When it starts giving you signals, more often than not, it's very high. Commonly, you'll do hypertension, you screen for high blood pressure, you screen for sugar, diabetes, you will screen for hepatitis, okay? You will do breast screening, cervical screening for those who can afford it, and then you can uh, you screen for glaucoma. For those who get the eye test, we do visual acuity and then glaucoma for eye test. And then dental. You know, poor dental health can cause heart disease. Right now in this country, basically, 
um, it's organizations, mostly, it's organizations who organize screening for either their workers or you have churches, mainly churches who organize screening for their um, congregations and then a few of us every now and again. And then we have the missions, the Americans and whatnot who come on medical missions who also help with screening sometimes. The other thing is that um, I think you have to give credit to the pharmaceutical companies because when you approach them, they will help you with drugs. When you talk to individuals, they might help you come and volunteer and help with the screening. But otherwise, you're paying the personnel and you're paying the brunt of the cost of the drugs. So the churches, organizations, and the hospitals who decide to do screening will bear the cost. When you're doing your screening, ideally you should be providing education. So you, as the people sit waiting for their turn, you talk to them about breast cancer, the reason why they're screening for cancer, the things that they need to look up, out for. Hypertension, any age. Diabetes, any age. Breast cancer, any age. Cervical cancer, any age. So basically, it's things like prostate cancer, which um, usually you'll do a PSA. For. But usually we'll look at people above maybe 40. If you have a history of prostate cancer in the family, then maybe you'll want to, want, you'll want to start screening a little earlier. Above 50 years, we'll do a colonoscopy to look into the colon to make sure there are no polyps or any cancer changes taking place there. But we wouldn't do that in a 25-year-old or a 30-year-old unless there is an indication.